Every time Elon Musk announces a new milestone in Starship's development, it creates a buzz in the space community. Perhaps it comes from people's natural curiosity for things that are beyond their imagination. And Elon's recent shocking revelation about the Raptor engine is no exception as he showed the world a Raptor's new record. Honestly, this engine is growing like a storm. So how powerful is the new SpaceX Raptor engine? Why can SpaceX do that? Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. And I think ultimately we'll probably, the booster engines, we'll, we'll aim to get the booster engines over 330 tons of thrust, which would mean 10,000 tons of total thrust at liftoff. For context, it's important to note that SpaceX has already made impressive strides in engine thrust with Raptor's fourth version. By extrapolating from the data of the booster with a thrust of 10,000 tons of force, it's straightforward to calculate that Raptor 4 would have a thrust of approximately 303 tons of thrust. However, Musk emphasized in the comments section his aspiration for even higher thrust, stating, hopefully, higher thrust. The long-term goal is 330 tons of thrust. Even with a projected thrust of 303, the Raptor 4 engine's power is nothing short of extraordinary, nearly equivalent to half the thrust of the legendary F1 engine on the Saturn V. But a thrust-to-weight ratio, TWR of F1, is very humble, at 94.1, whereas this data for Raptor V4 is up to 202. This figure is truly mind-boggling, especially when compared to the benchmark TWR of the Merlin 1D engine, which stands at 180. For Raptor V3, the company also achieved a remarkable increase in thrust, elevating it from 185 tons to 280 tons. However, the huge power is not the only advantage of V3 and V4. The Raptor 3 also will not need a heat shield. So Ra Raptor 3 looks, looks very simple, and it is actually simplified in a lot of ways, but a lot of the complexity is hidden because we have integral cooling channels uh, in, in many parts of the engine that, that don't exist in Raptor 2. So in order to not have a heat shield, it has to be very resilient. Once Raptor V3 can work perfectly without a heat shield, the V4 can do the same. This is considered a full explanation for Elon Musk's previous statement about the removal of the heat shield on Raptor's later versions. According to Elon, this is due to integral cooling channels. So what does it mean? In reality, Raptor V3 and 4 will integrate most of the external plumbing lines and manifolds seen on Raptor V2 into the walls of the larger, inherently more robust components. To harden the V3 and 4, SpaceX engineers started to practice on Raptor V2. It has far fewer small external cooling lines and sensors compared to V1. Many valves were combined into valve plates, helping further simplify plumbing. On the original version of Raptor, while SpaceX was learning how to control the engine, a very large amount of development sensors were needed, allowing them to track pressure and temperature throughout Raptor's plumbing. And now they don't need them anymore. Additionally, installing those small cooling lines on the outside of the engine is dangerous. They are vulnerable to being shaken around when the rocket is running, a factor in both reusability and relight reliability, and to the re-entry forces of both heating and being buffeted by shockwaves, along with being exposed to neighboring engine RUD shrapnel, not to mention being a possible source of that shrapnel. By removing a large amount of these components, SpaceX has made the engine more flame and heat proof, as well as prevented the risk of explosion due to the broken external cooling lines. Not only that, this will make the final assembly much faster and easier. Imagine that you just connect all the main components together and skip all the time consuming fiddly small plumbing. It sounds comfortable, right? Yeah, it's a huge bonus for applying the first principle thinking for SpaceX's CEO, the single biggest mistake made by smart engineers is optimizing a thing that should not exist. That's why running through the first principles is mandatory in the incredibly complex rocketry industry. A smaller bonus is the lightweight enabled by the integration of the spaghetti of plumbing into the walls of the larger components. As a result, the Raptor V3 hardware looks rather similar to the simplified diagrams of how the Raptor engine works or the simplified models of the engine. The simple design contributes to cutting down on maintenance time between missions, meaning faster Raptors turnaround. On June 2019, Musk tweeted that, since Raptor produces 200 tons of force, 
the cost per ton would be $1,000. However, Raptor is designed for approximately 1,000 flights with negligible maintenance, so cost per ton over time would actually be roughly $1. Wow, approximately 1,000 flights with little maintenance. What? If that dream comes true, it will be SpaceX's new record because their best operational engine is the Merlin, which can just be reused a dozen times, if I'm correct, or the most reused engines in space exploration history were the main engines on each space shuttle, which flew up to only a few dozen times each. Seriously, what specifically about Raptor makes it anywhere near capable of that compared to previous engines, Something about the seals slash bearings slash materials slash full flow producing max enthalpy? Elon Musk answered that question as follows. Other rocket engines were designed for no or almost no reuse. Raptor is designed for heavy and immediate reuse, like an aircraft jet engine, with inspections required only after many flights, assuming instrumentation shows it good. Using hydrostatic bearings certainly helps. This leads to another question. How many flights is the Merlin actually good for with no major refurbishment now that you've reflown it so many times? Is the bearing the limiting factor or is it the coking? As Elon said, Merlin could probably do 1,000 flights too. Turbine blade fatigue cracking would require periodic weld repair or replacement, probably some seals and bearings as well. Coking is not really an issue. For Raptor turbines, they are designed to mitigate that issue. Those turbines run at much higher pressure, but lower temperature. Thermal shock and strain are what fatigue Merlin turbine blades. Solvable for high reusability, but better to apply that engineering to Raptor. Another notable feature of the Raptor is the type of propellant it uses. At its core, it's like other engines, burning chemical fuel to produce thrust. But Raptor is considered the first engine using liquid oxygen and methane, and its innovative design means that it just might be SpaceX's ace in the hole when it comes to exploring the solar system. Methane prevents a buildup of deposits in the engine compared to other fuels like kerosene, a process known as coking, while its higher performance allows for lower costs. Raptor also uses what's known as a full-flow staged combustion engine only the third engine in history to employ this technique, whereas Merlin uses the more common open cycle system. The previous two attempts at such an engine, one in the Soviet Union in the 1960 and another in the US in the early 2000s, never made it beyond testing. A full flow stage combustion engine refers to how a pump spins a turbine to drive the engine, using what's called a pre-burner to get this process going by, injecting a small amount of fuel. Normally, some of the propellant is expended in a traditional open cycle engine to start this process, but Raptor will use every drop of propellant available, making it one of the most efficient rocket engines ever built. Raptor burns that fuel at a high enough pressure that can then steer the fire from pre-burner back into the combustion chamber and completely burn that propellant with the rest of the propellants, says space consultant Charlie Garcia from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and it does this in a very clever way that only the Russians have done previously by putting all the propellant in the engine through the pre-burners. The end result is that Raptor has a much higher pressure than Merlin, making it the highest pressure rocket engine in existence and leading to its aforementioned larger thrust than Merlin despite its similar size. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.